Okay, the uh, anthropologist Gabriella Coleman put out several writings last year on hacker culture and what that is. She defined hacker as a technologist with a love for computing and a hack is a clever solution arrived through non-obvious means. I think she's right, but also believe that the definition of hacker should be expanded, including not only clever computer users, but anyone that finds a non-obvious means to a creative end. Segue into Honors, which is a group of technology users that have their own cons, make and takes, technical competition, weird names, bad puns, commonalities. Now you may think of Halloween only on the 31st of October, maybe a few days before it. Uh, many people may not think about security until someone here shows you a particularly juicy or scary exploit. Others of us think about security all year long. I think about Halloween and security just about every day. Some might think honors are kind of on the fringe, but I like to think of them as uh, creative manipulation. As in anything that creative people find passion for, haunters come with varied backgrounds, expertise, ability, and areas of haunting interest. They also have similar problems. Haunts have been shut down for being too scary. Haunters have been sued or lost property insurance. HOAs bitch at them a lot. Trick-or-treaters, or totters, are considered end users that need to be manipulated into one direction or emotional state. Haunter's aliases are like Hauntaholic, Bobzilla, Dark Lore, Evil Queen, Spooky One, The Bloodshed Brothers, Zombie F. Forums that I have lurked and joined have helpful haunters that love to show off what they've created and how they do it, too. My personal favorite is hauntforum.com. From that side, I've learned how to solder better, rewire power strips, and creative use for shiatsu neck massagers. I have a list of old hardware that I look for at yard sales and secondhand shops, hoping I can recreate some of the outstanding homemade props I've seen online. In these examples, I see people that are curious about the world around them, but have a lens focused on Halloween, instead of a lens focused on security. How hardware geeks who have different specialties like electrical and mechanical, atmosphere geeks, they do fog, light, and sound, and graphic design geeks like Hello Windows that I played just before we started here. That's uh, from a guy named Mark Jervis. Okay, things you may be familiar with. You can find haunters the day before trash pickup going through neighborhood trash, construction sites, business dumpsters. They like zombies. Most projects show, that are shown on the internet are step-by-step -step so that anyone can follow them. And they like to save money by uh, making hardware do what it wasn't intended. This chart off the Spectrum IEEE website sums up the way different hacks mesh together. If Haunters were on here, they'd probably be in the lower right quadrant. Obviously, the authors of this chart have an expanded view of what hacking is. As you might expect, there's a lot of specialized terms. Jack lantern, monster in a box, a bucky, which is a fourth quality medical grade skeleton, uh, monster mud, which is drywall and latex paint mixed together to used on a paper mache fabric. Uh, FCGs and FCSs are flying crank ghosts and spiders, which are basically marionette devices and totters, trick-or-treaters. Hardware hacking and enhancements, camaraderie and research are things that attracted me to the Haunter groups. The following are projects I've done in the last year from ideas and previous work done by the Haunter community. There's power strip packs for timing of, of effects and lighting effects, fog coolers, shiatsu animated ghoul, and totter control. My, second, my search for uh, secondhand shots and massages reminds me of when, I've, when I used to look for, say, like an Orinoco Gold PCMCIA card with an external antenna connector or the right chipset for a WRT54G. Now, every one of the hacks that I'm going to show you have very good how-tos on many of the HANA websites. 
Uh, two power strip hack that uh, I brought with me to show. Uh, these allow for a look of bad power source or a motion detector initiation of the power source. They come in various configs and parts are usually easily obtainable. This hack allows lower wattage, lower the better, incandescent bulbs to flicker randomly like there's spotty power. This is done by mounting fluorescent tube starters in line with the electrical current between plug outlet sets. Each floral starter has a unique flicker. This only works with incandescent bulbs and the best effects happen if they are low wattage. I've used them to light lamps in front of windows throughout my house during Halloween uh, to light the candle that Scara, the little doll there on the end there, she has a floral starter in line on her candle. Uh, there's COTS units that can do similar, but they can cost quite a bit. The floral starters and the base that you hook them with, you know, maybe a buck a set. Motion detector controls all the plugs on the power strip, turning them on for, say, 15 seconds. So with this, you can light up a scene or an animated prop for several seconds. You can pick up two of the motion detectors at like Home Depot for 20 bucks. Fog cooler. Your fog coolers are made to keep fog machine smoke cold and therefore rolling along the ground over your tombstones. Generally you find an ice filled handmade or store bought cooler rigged for fog flow through PVC unless a dumpster dive lets you come up with something better. Like this. So we have two vacuum cleaner hoses, two holes drilled in the front door of a dorm room fridge, someone threw away, and some duct tape strategically placed. The fog machine's on top, pushes the uh, fog into an empty fridge, and then out the bottom. But with either design, you get the desired result. Shiatsu walkers. This is my favorite right here. The zombie on a walker basically she has a side to side movement like this. Shiatsu props are animated with the help of a shiatsu neck massager and a PVC pipe body basically. Uh, a search on YouTube for shiatsu animated props will get you an amazing amount of hits. Now here's another great same uh, engine shiatsu massager. So this is the ghoul that I set up in the hardware hacking village, if any of you went in there and saw it. So take the basic PVC body and tie down the movement of the shiatsu so it doesn't move too much. You add a head and a robe. But again, who would have thought of using a shiatsu massager for the movement? And this is the movement. show you a close-up of how the movement actually looks from the massager. Oops. And 
No, this is a declaimer about hardware hacking. Um, so I saw this note I found on the motion detector of the, the ghoul shiatsu and hacking hardware village. Now, you got to remember to be careful out there. Check your displays after they get shipped, because apparently a wire got loose. And this is not a clue to any contest that Johnny Mac may or may not be in right now. Now, I was part of a group buy for about 1,200 units of electronic firecrackers this year. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with mine, but a lot of hunters out there think they're pretty cool and are going to incorporate them into something. Atmosphere. Lighting. A guy named Robert D. Brown has a really nice PDF out there showing how to use lighting to circumvent street lights messing with your haunt. So he's basically showing you how to use more light to fix bad lighting. Uh, for sound, there's a guy out there, his nickname's Control Geek. Um, this guy ran a single blind experiment through his haunt to see how subsonic sound frequencies affected people in a haunt environment. Like if it made them feel uneasy or uncomfortable. It didn't really have an effect, but the scientific observation was there to find out. Herding cats. There's a lot in the prop placement. Uh, having a not-so-scary path for younger tots, bait and switch, make tots look in one direction and scare them from another. I really look at this as participation theater, and I also have people to um, Help me guide people into the right position. Um, this, if you see the three ghosts in the air, this is a turnstile ghost suspended upside down from a ceiling fan atop a basketball hoop pole. So tots are meant to follow the directions of the ghosts as they float in a circle. And here are lanes made with bamboo and spider webs to force the tots into the direction you want them to go. Uh, gateway props to tell tots which way to go. Either they can go the scary direction or not so. And actually, I just picked this gargoyle up from Marshall's. It, and there's the fog fridges under it supplying the fog. Not so good. Um, some haunters have been sued because their Halloween decorations have been shut down or had the fire department call them for because they've created too much fog. Uh, haunters have lost their homeowner's insurance because their home haunts needed additional special insurance. Uh, their demands uh, from the gawkers, which are the parents normally, um, to stop all the scary stuff so that um, their kid can go through, or they'll call the cops or the fire marshal or someone. And again, you can only imagine what someone would say if, um, if, you, if they saw you, this stuff in your yard, or your HOA would say. So whether it's a love of zombies or just a good scare, Haunters think about the big H all year round. This is a wonderful open source community and everybody is happy to share their tech and problems and solutions. Lastly, there's a certain pride in all do-it-yourselfers, not only in saving money, but in making something better that can be bought at a store and for less money. Also, you find a lot of haunters would rather tell someone to go to hell instead of changing what they've put all year into making. Thank you.